us prepare our hearts and minds.
of God to us. And that is something that we have to receive it and claim it. Amen? So it's so amazing that uh, I really see you again right now. And uh, as we are really starting 2019, this is the second week of 2019, Sunday service of 2019, I think we must remain focused to the promised land that God has in store for us. And we need to always remind us that we are crossing over to that promised land. Okay, I don't know the promised land that God has put into your heart right now or for the past few weeks, but I believe the promise is true. Now, when your father or mother promise you, I think you believe that you're going to have it later on, right? And if God said something to us, He will do it. He's not a God who lies. What He said, He will fulfill it. And you know what? Sometimes we think that we are not capable of crossing over to this promised land, but we have Jesus Christ walking with us. The Holy Spirit is always available for us. Amen? So, I want you to take courage and focus to the Word of God. And we need to know that in every areas of our life, we need to cross over. Every areas of our life, we need to cross over. And for us, my family has, uh, you know, has the third child in the family, and we call, we, we, uh, of course, the name is Ivana Hope, and she's still infant. And for us, it's very challenging because uh, I think after eight years, we don't have, uh, you know, we don't have a baby like her right now. So there are times that we have sleep, sleepless night, just uh, taking care of the baby. We need to feed her. Okay, we need to, you know, to take her, take her back. Everything, you know, for an, you know, what the need of infant, we need to, to give it to her. But I think for us, when we become Christian, we become, we became infant as well. For you who are, no, for you who received Jesus Christ recently, probably you're still infant and you need some guidance from the mature Christians, okay? And as a Christian, or as a baby Christian, we call it infant Christian, we need to cross over something for us to grow. We need to, you know, we need help from someone else. We need the help of the Holy Spirit for us to grow as well as Christian. And this is something that I'm going to share to you right now. Where we are. What stage in our life, in maturity, especially in our, in our spiritual life, so that we will know what to do. The step that we should do in 2019. That's why the title of my sermon today is Crossing Over from Spiritual Infants. I know some of you are not spiritual infant right now, but in a way I'm going to show you something, show you a table where you can find where you are. And also give you some examples, okay, maybe you can relate in your life, and then you will know where you are. Because if you know where you are, then you will know what to do next. Amen? If you are traveling, you have to know where you are so that you will know where to go. Either you are going to go left or to, do, to go right or go forward. Because if you don't know where you are, it's hard for you to move forward. Amen? You, are you ready? Where you are right? Where are you now? Here in the church, right? <laughs> so, can we all stand and read these verses with me? In Ephesians 4, 14 to 16. And then we read it together. Okay? Verse 14. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful scheme. Rather speak the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint, with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Let us bow down our heads and pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your presence. Holy Spirit, teach us something right now. You are our teacher. Use me. Everything that I prepared right now, override it, Lord. And I want 
want you to speak through me that we may be blessed by you. Speak to all of us right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now you may be seated, church. So, spiritual infants. But before I'm going to share to you about this, all of us became infant as well. Okay, I don't know if you if you born here adult already. Have you, uh, is there someone else born uh, 20 years old? <laughs> you know, when you grow old, you have birth already. You, you, you know, you, you, you are six foot tall already. Probably your mom can, couldn't, uh, could, couldn't bear you, you know, you couldn't uh, give birth on you. But all of us, we become infant. Amen? All of us need help from an adult. And most probably, all of us don't want to remain infants. Who are here wants to remain infants? No one, right? Everyone here wants to grow. How about spiritual maturity? Do you want to remain infants spiritually? No, as well. I think for us, we need to grow as well. In Hebrews 6, okay, the writer, the writer of this uh, book in the Bible said, Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings, the laying one hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Okay? The Bible said that we must grow. We must live the childish way that we have. When my baby Ivana, when she eats solid food later on, okay, maybe when she becomes three years old, probably she will leave drinking milk on the, you know, how do you call this? This uh, affair, you know? The bottle, right? Probably she will drink on first on glass now when she grow older. And it's the same for us. Sometimes we need to live the childish ways that we have when we were new believers, when we were child in our spiritual life. And this is something that is normal for us being Christian. That's why right now we really need to talk about this because this is very important because as Christians sometimes we don't live all these childish ways that we have. Okay? But right now we're going to talk about how, Lord, show me I'm still being a child or I'm already mature in my life so that when we know where we are right now, we will grow older as well. We will ask help from our brothers and sisters who are mature in Christ. You know, when, when you say, when God permits, when God permits, God will give us maturity. He will, you know, when, when, we, when, we, when God knows that we are growing older already, then God will permit us to do something extra. Okay? When Marco was younger, okay, I think he was eight or nine years old, he always asked me, Daddy, can I go to Centro Malone? You know, at those days, sometimes it's very dangerous going out, okay? And I ask him, no, it's hard because it's very dangerous, especially during winter, it's so dark. I will not allow him to go alone in Centro. And sometimes he asks me, can I go to Amanda alone? No, it's hard, right? And I, I will not permit him. I did not permit him to go alone. Why? Because he's not mature enough to go alone in that area. Amen? See, so, you know the permission that God is telling us. If God knows how mature we are, then He will permit us to do something extra. He will permit us to, to grow even more. You know, probably when, when Eliza is asking me for something, Daddy, can, I, can, I, can you buy me a car? Will I permit him to buy for her a car? No, of course not. Because his maturity level is not for her to have a car. At the same time, for us being Christian, we ask God, Lord, give me this and give me that. Sometimes God will not give you because He will not permit you because of the maturity level that we have right now. As a Christian, God is telling us that you, do, you need to do something. But probably He tells us, maybe you live something childish ways in your life, and then you see, I see you, you are maturing. Okay? This is the fact also. Christianity, maturity of Christianity is not measured by age, okay? It's not measured by age. 
Maturity level is Christianity is measured by love and how they accept the pains and hurts in their life. Some said to me that you will know that you are mature when people hurt you, you get not hurt. You still love. That's how you measure maturity according to my, I think, a teacher in Bible college. Because the Bible said you must deny yourself, you must crucify your flesh. That's our, that's our goal to be like Christ when Jesus Christ crucified on the cross, his flesh died. And for us, when we say that we are mature, our flesh died also. When people hurt you intentionally, you get not hurt. Right? Because you are mature already, because you deny yourself already. Instead, you love them. That's why the Bible said, love your enemy. Amen? And I believe people hurt you as well. Amen? Now, probably it's not only me. Probably some people hurt you as well. And you know that you are growing maturely if you see them. You, you know, you react to them, that you love them back after they hurt you. Amen? So this is how we measure maturely. And God permits, God permits, if He saw us, if, he, if God sees us maturing also in every way, that's why we need to live the child this way. Okay, so I'll give you, this is, you know, this is only introduction of mine. <laughs> Amen? Because I know that we need to really know, we need to really know to know to how to mature in life. And I'll give you the table, okay? I'll give you points later on. I'll show you the table. This is, uh, you know, this is probably you are before you know God, okay? I'm not telling you you are atheist before. Probably you have an idea about God. So you are exploring God. And you, when you are exploring God, can you move forward? You probably sometimes never talk to God or rarely talk to God. And you have no fellowship with God as well. And God is unknown or probably you only know Him by, by mind, okay? Before you will become Christian. But when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then this starts beginning in God. And then you started to occasionally talk to God. Amen? You occasionally talk to God now after you receive Christ. Later on, it starts relationship. Now you say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus Christ is my friend. It's friendship. Okay? Not yet BFF, but you are friends with Jesus Christ already. That's how you started, right? When you become, this is infanthood. You receive it. This is crossing over, okay? You cross over through the grace of God. You have crossed over from and we live in heart to believe in heart because of the grace of God. Not by your own doing, but the grace of God. So this is something that you have crossed over from unbelieving heart to a believing heart. You have relationship with Christ. That's why, but this beginning in God is still infanthood. And there's still immaturity in the hearts of infants. Amen? So that's why the first point of my topic right now is spiritual infants are immature. Okay? When you say immature, it's very negative. My child is immature, but I could see her, I couldn't see her, you know, negative thing. She's still immature. When she needs something, she just cries. Okay? When he poop, she cries. When she is hungry, she cries. When she's sleepy, she cries. Amen? And sometimes when we are immature Christian, we just complain in a very small thing. When we like something, we shout. Right? Amen? When, when, when people hurt us, we just shout as well. Sometimes we shout out in Facebook. That's how our, you know, that's our channel of crying right now. Maybe we don't cry as a, you know, as a person, but we shout out, we are crying in the Facebook. Sometimes it's the same, you know, I tell you it's not wrong. You, when you are infant, sometimes we have this, but when you do it for many years already as an infant, then that's something wrong in your life. Amen? When, when Ivana is already seven years old and she cries when she's hungry, then that's a problem to her, right? 
But for us, when we are in, when we already Christian for many years, and we are hurt for small things only, and we cry, then there's something in us. We need to mature. We need to move on. Amen. You get it. This is immaturity, but it's normal for infants. It's normal for infants. I have I have experienced this as well. That's why in Ephesians 14, 4, 14 it says here, so that we may no longer be children. It says, we may no longer children. Tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful scheme. It says, when you are a child, you are just like a thing on the ocean, tossed and fro by a wind. There's no direction. When you are infant, immature, there's no direction. If I let my child alone in the house, she cannot do anything but cry. There's no direction for her yet. Even a child year old, a five year old child, it's hard for them to go into a right direction. They need guidance. That's why it says here we, that we know, may no longer be children. Paul is telling that he likes us to grow, mature, so that we will know where to go in our life, the direction in our life. Have you watched the movie Perfect Storm? There's Clooney, right? You know, there's a big storm. And the ship, you know, the ship just was tossed to and fro by the wind. Nowhere else to go because that storm is too big. The storm is too big. And sometimes for us, there is storms in our life as well, right? But we can become on the storm when we are mature. But when we are not mature, then probably we'll just be tossed to and fro by the storm. That's why the problem is very normal. But I want you, all of us, to be mature so that we will know what to do during problems when trial comes in our life. So that during this situation, we will continue to have direction toward the victory that we already have in our life so that we can still have the promised land that God has in store for us because we are crossing over. Because when the storm comes to us, when we are immature, then our direction will go left or to the right. We cannot go cross over, crossing over to the other side of the promise that God has in store for us. That's why maturity, growing up, is so important in our life. Are we church? Spiritual infant are carnal in their thinking, okay? Carnality. It's carnal in their thinking. They can hardly understand truth. In 1 Corinthians, it says here, but I, brothers, count not, eh, could not address you as spiritual mature, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human ways? You see, Spiritual infants have their paradigm, okay? Their worldview is always me, 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 me. This is the worldview of infant, right? It's always me, me, me. I couldn't say to my child, hey, can you understand me? You always cry. It's the baby is crying, right? I couldn't say that, hey, stop, stop crying. And they still cry. Because they are selfish. Natural way. This is natural way, okay? That's why we are training our babies to grow maturely as well. Okay? And when we are child, we are selfish in a way that we are always thinking about me, 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 and me. When you were hurt, you think that you are the only one hurt by people. When you have problems, you think that you are the only one who have problem in the world. Okay? Maybe some of you women, okay? Hey, don't don't, don't don't annoy me because I have menstruation, okay? <laughs> Some people, okay, don't annoy me because I have a headache. Or else I could, I could hurt you. Right? Sometimes they, they use them as a Levi. They, they use a Levi for them to, you know, to get angry. Amen? No, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's natural. But we must have the Holy Spirit so, have, so that we can have 
that self-control because that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. You can say, hey, I did this because I have hormonal change. <laughs> okay? Can, uh, can men also have hormonal change as well? <laughs> Sometimes we, we, we do it a little bit. I did myself also when I was in fact, hey, I'm tired from work right now. Okay? Give me coffee, man. Yeah? Children, behave. Okay, I'm, I'm tired from, from work. Sometimes I, I have this kind of attitude as well before when I was in fact. Now I understand that the, the Holy Spirit has given to us so that we can have self-control. I'm in church so that we can grow as a body of Christ as an, and as an individual. Amen? So, don't just be stuck. Don't be stuck on these things in this world. When you are in front, you're just stuck on these worldly things, these material things. You forgot that, you know, we need to grow spiritually also. And God is not pleased for us to remain carnal in our thinking. God is not pleased if we remain infants because He expects us to grow. He expect, He takes care of us. Sometimes the needs that we have in our, you know, in our in our infanthood, He actually give it just for us to grow, just for us to ask Him even more. In Jeremiah 4, 22, it says here, this is the heart of God in Jeremiah, okay? And I want you to listen to the heart of God. This is what he said. My people are fools. They do not know me. They are senseless children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil. They know not how to do good. This is the heart of God. Because you know why? Because they remain in front. They cannot just grow old. They cannot just love one another. That's why we need to measure our maturity by loving one another and how we react on the offenses of others to our life. You know, it's, it, it's really hard when in grade one, I, uh, how old are you now, children? Probably you, you, in mathematics, in, in grade one, you still, uh, you know, you still do this one plus one equals one, right? Or two, I mean. <laughs> Oh, I forgot my mathematics already. Huh? But when you are in grade one or you know in class eight, you could probably the teacher probably will not teach you on calculus. You know calculus already? You know the differential equations. You know this algebra or trigonometry. They probably will not teach you trigonometry in grade one, right? Why? 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 Because your level level of math thinking at those age, you know, at the grade one. Probably if you are a special child, they will teach you calculus, okay? Probably you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot think so much on how to solve all these problems. And being Christian in infant, okay, when you are grown infant, sometimes you don't understand a lot of things. You, have, you cannot just understand a lot of things. But I want you to trust this. I want you to trust God. Even you know that you don't understand, trust God because later on as you grow, you will understand it. In 1 Peter 2.21 it says, To you, you were called because Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Okay? This is an example. Because Paul suffered much. And during those times, Christians don't understand the suffering of Paul experienced. You know why? Because some of them are still carnal in thinking. Some of them are still infant in spiritual life. Probably even until now. Sometimes we think that suffering is not normal for Christianity. We think that, you know, when I suffer this, I have to leave my faith. Sometimes it happens that, yes, I have to be exempted in sufferings, but I can serve God. You know, I can do worship singing, I can do this. But when suffering comes, oh, I just quit everything in my life, especially in my faith to God. You know, this is something that Paul has example in the Bible. The suffering is normal for Christian. Even Jesus Christ has mentioned to us, if they persecute me, they will persecute you as well. If you want to follow me, then follow what I experience. Do you know what Jesus Christ happened on the cross? He was crucified and died there. Even Paul said, 
to the extent that I will know Jesus Christ to the extent that I will be going to be crucified as well. He is, in his maturity, he desired to suffer like Christ did. This is how mature Paul is. He is willing to suffer because he's, he likes to know Christ more. And this is maturity that we that we know that our life here on earth is not bed of roses. We could experience suffering as well. Sometimes we experience suffering from our brothers and sisters, right? But because of maturity, but because we are growing, then we still love them. We still love people who persecute us. We still love people that who needs Christ. We will not complain that there's a lot of drug addicts there. Why? Because they, they didn't know Jesus Christ yet. But instead of being annoyed of people outside, we will love them by sharing the word of God to them. Amen? This is something that we must have in our life. And, you know, this is, this is something that is normal, even for me. And I give you some signs of infant, okay? This is some practical uh, observation that I see in the church for the past few years. This is an observation. It's not only what I see in this year, but this is something that I observe for the past few years, okay? Show you, I can, I show, can you show you the table again? Okay? Uh, it's not there? Okay, if not, uh, this is something. If you are in fun, reading the word of God is this, you are being spoon-fed by a mature Christian, right? If you are in fun, sometimes you are asked the mature Christian, teach me more, teach me more, teach me more. Have you experienced that? Teach me more, I want you to disciple me more. I want you to disciple me more. That sometimes you experience as an infant, or as sometimes being an infant, you know, you don't read the Bible unless your disciple is telling you to read the Bible. Okay? Sometimes this is the attitude of a baby Christian, an infant Christian. And when you are infant in Christianity, in spiritual life, Probably you are only praying for yourself. Lord, I pray for my job. I pray for my family. And sometimes you don't pray for other people. Or probably when you pray other people, Lord, change these people because they hurt me. Right? This is something that you, that you act, that you pray. You don't pray that, Lord, teach me so that I may change. This is different. When I was Christian, uh, when I was in front, I pray, Lord, change them because they hurt me. I want you to chase them because I'm right them wrong. <laughs> and this is sometimes we do, it's normal, okay? That's why we call it infant. In ministry, probably we say, oh, I'm not good enough. I will not be involved in ministry. I'm not good enough. As infant, sometimes you speak that way. In my status today, I don't feel, you know, I could do much in the church. I don't have time in ministry. When you were infant, I don't have time in ministry. I'm busy at my work. I'm busy of my career. I'm busy on my studies. I'm busy on the school. Probably you, could, you still have this kind of attitude when in terms of ministry. Right? Because you, you always say, me, 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 me. Okay? This is about infant, okay? And probably you will, see, you will say, I cannot join the ministry because sister is there. And I hate that sister. Right? Or a brother, or brother Stone is there. Brother Stone is very annoyed. You don't want to be part of that ministry because brother Stone is there, right? And so maybe we have that kind of attitude. I don't want to go to life because sister is there, very annoying, very talkative. I don't want to go to life because the food is not so good, right? I don't want to eat arrascado only lumpia, right? So sometimes we have this kind of attitude as infants. And probably as infant, sometimes we are always late. Always late being infant, okay? I don't want to offend you. This is something sometimes happen, okay? This is happening. Because when there's an excitement, maturity in our hearts, we always on time, we always want to be there earlier than the time. There's no Filipino time, there's no Brazilian time, there's no Norwegian time, but there is Christian time. Amen? Always on time. When you are meeting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, are you late? No. You should be there on time. 
and even earlier. Because you're meeting the King of Kings, the, the one who created the universe. And you do it with excellence as well. Right? And this is the attitude of infants. And probably you don't give time as an infant as well. Probably oh, I have no enough money. Right? How can I give more? How can I tax? This is the attitude of you know, infant as well. And one thing, the attitude of infant, they don't want to be corrected. Right? Are you willing to be corrected, church? Yes. Wow, many are mature here. <laughs> wow, okay, let, we can line up later on and we're going to correct one another, okay? <laughs> but this is the attitude of infant. They don't want to be corrected. They, they are always right. When a brother rebuke or a sister rebuke them, uh, they just go away. Amen? But I praise God, all of us said, yes, we are already mature. Amen? Praise God, I'm so happy for that. That's why I give you a warning, I told you that this is infanthood. We all came in this stage. But we must live the childish ways that we have. Amen, church? Even me, I experienced it. I told to my pastor before, Pastor, if I overcome this area of my life, I will become perfect. You know, the pastor, they just rebuked me. Hey, you cannot be perfect. You cannot be just like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the perfect. Until you live here. You are growing and growing and growing. You cannot be perfect because you have changed one attitude in your life. No, there's a lot of areas that we need to change. I'm in church. So that's why we need to grow. We need to grow. Say to the person beside you, grow. 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 I remember one time. Okay, I remember one time. Man, okay, listen to me, man. It's very hard for me to raise my hand when I worship. It's really hard for me because why everyone is when they worship their hands, they're lifting their hands. Lord, I live with my heart. I give you my soul. Sometimes they, 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 they did that in my in my experience. Why everyone raising their hands? And I see and I see myself. I'm a macho. I'm a macho. I will not raise my hand. Right? I'm a match man. If my crush will find me raising my hand, maybe they will, maybe she will, you know, she will be turned off to me. This is my attitude. A match man is not raising their hands. Do you want to be macho? Yeah. Yeah? Raise your hands. This is the macho image of Christ. Because this is what the Bible said in 1 Timothy 2. I, I did not put it there. In every place of worship, I want men, okay? I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God. Amen. 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 I want men with holy hands lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. And this is what I experience also. Being infant, I am so shy to raise my hands to worship God, to tell them, Lord, you are my God. You know, that's why when I was infant, it became TV. Lord, I think it's a TV, right? Now, it's become 68-inch TV. Lord, I give you my heart. <laughs> Make it a 68-inch TV when you worship God. Surrender yourself, right? Amen, man? Amen. Praise God, even women, of course. I want you to raise your hands and worship God. Because if God, this is, it. this is what the Bible is telling us. Don't be shy. You're still macho. Okay? You're still macho. Amen. So, point number two, spiritual infant are to grow up. Okay? Grow up in Ephesians 4, 15, it says, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Okay? So, in this part, I want to show you the table again. So, in the third level, this is something we need to be closer to God. We need to be closer to God because when you're closer to God, you frequently talk to God. You talk to God regularly now. Every morning, every night, you talk to God. Okay? And you become follower of Christ. You become disciple by Christ, with the Holy Spirit. You allow yourself to be discipled. And then, Jesus Christ is your best friend. When your best friend, when Jesus Christ is your best friend, you talk Jesus Christ to your friends. If Jesus Christ is not your best friend, you are shy to talk Jesus Christ to your friend. 
to your family, to your colleagues. You're going to say, I'm a Christian. 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 I'm a Christian.
God is the spirit of goodness. And when the God is living in us, when we do, then we do good as well. Are we church? That's why this is something that we must learn. We must know in our life because we are we are being, spiritual being. Many people that we are human being. To tell you honestly, we are spiritual being. When you die, your human nature will stay here, but your spirits will live forever. People will say, yes, of course we are human being, but the real us is spiritual being. And we must invest everything for our spirits, because our spirit will live forever. Amen? In Matthew 7, it says, Everyone then who hears this word of mine and does them will be like wise men who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on the house, but it did not fall. Because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sun. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was fall of it. The Word of God is the foundation of our life. When you want to start to build your life, especially in your family, you start it from the Word of God. Because even storm came, you will remain standing. Because you make the Word of God the foundation of our life. Am I church? Amen. Do you want to see the signs again of this level of maturity? I give you the signs. When you were an infant, you are spoon-fed, okay? You are spoon-fed by a mature Christian. Now, in this area, you are now closer to God. You learn how to read the Word of God alone without any reminder from your brothers and sisters. Amen, church? In life group, okay? In life group. I give you instances because this is what I've observed for the past few years. Probably in your infanthood stage, okay? You see a lot of people and you say, oh, they're, this life group is very interesting, but they irritate me. People are irritating me. But when you are mature in this stage, you're going to say, hey, they irritate me, but I love them. I will continue to have fellowship with them. You know, you grow on how you see them. You grow on how you love them as well. Amen? So let's continue. When you are infant, when you are infant, when you meet the person who hurts you, okay? Okay, probably in Amanda, when you meet the person who hurts you, you're gonna say, oops. Hey, probably you do that, right? Oops. It seems like you didn't, you didn't see anything. Okay? But now you are mature. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Oh, I miss you. I love you. Right? Right? Yes. You're gonna say, hey, brother. Because <laughs> he's still in front. But when you are mature, you still can say hi, hello. You can still I say I love you to the person who works you. Are we church? You know, understand the stage of uh, maturity? In ministry, probably before you don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't understand the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, you see because you saw a lot of manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. You are not being ignorant anymore. You're trying to have, you, you're, you, you want and you desire to have this gift also of the Holy Spirit so that you can serve. You can serve. And probably when you are attending the church, when you are infant, you are late, right? Sometimes you are upset. But when you are maturing, you are deciding to ask God to bring you into the fellowship all the time. You are not satisfied for one life group, probably you desire two life groups more. Now some of the sisters already, you know, some of the sisters or brothers here in the church, they really have more than one life group. They couldn't just take only one life group. They said, I want to attend more than I want to, you know, I want to learn more in this life group. I want to have fellowship there in Sister Janice. I want to have fellowship in Brother Sola's house. I want to have fellowship with the youth as well. They have this desire because they know that Jesus Christ is their best friend. What Jesus Christ's friend are the friends of us as well. That's why we must grow mature. And in verse 14, 
what is the goal here in verse 14? Can we look again in verse, four, uh, uh, verse 14? I-15, I mean, verse 15. Rather speaking the truth in love, this is the word of God, right? the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ. So, what is our goal? To be like Jesus Christ. Our goal here in this life is to be, God is to become Jesus Christ. And to, to be look like Jesus Christ, to be become like Jesus Christ, to act like Jesus Christ, and to behave like Jesus Christ. I mean, church, our standard is Christ Himself. Everything that we know about Him, that is our desire to be become like Him. When you are easily angry right now, you desire you desire to be calmer right now. When when you are always late, then you will become all the time, all the time, right? When you have you are doing sin all the time, then probably you you know you refrain from doing the sin also. When you are being challenged to do it, because Jesus Christ has been challenged to die on the cross, right? And if we are being challenged in a simple way, then we accept it because we know for sure that God is always here with us. Are we church? So this is the point number two. So number three point is this. A spiritual infant needs supports to support others. Okay? Infants need support. Don't stay away from fellowship. Sometimes when we receive Jesus Christ, we just stay away from fellowship. It seems like we think that we don't need anyone else in the church. The Bible said in first, verse 16, it says, From whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint, with which is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. You see the verse? We need one another. See the person beside you, I need you. I need you. Okay? If that is your wife, don't say I need you because your wife always cooks for you, okay? Yeah, look for the other side, okay? I need you. <laughs> okay? I need you, my sister. We all need one another. I need you. I you need, need me you. as well. We need one another. Why? I because we are you. part of the body of Christ. I need you. Some said, you are the foot. I am the eye. Some said, you are the mouth. You are the head, right? I need you. Because we are part of the body of Christ. You. We need to be together. We need to have fellowship with one another. I need you. And this is the thing. The table again, I want to show you. This is the last level of maturity that we have. Okay, next level, the table. Okay, this is the next one. We are God-centered. We are God-centered because before we are closer to God. Now we are God-centered. The selfish ways that we have has been left behind already. That's why we talk to God is a lifestyle. That is a lifestyle, okay? That's a lifestyle. Before we talk regularly, yes, we have a quiet time. But the whole of the whole day we work, you know. We don't have any time to, to talk with him. When we say lifestyle, even you are you are working, you talk to him. You can say thank you, Lord God. You 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 just speak with God every day, every moment in your life. This is a lifestyle. Pray. Right? And then it's not only followers of God, but Lordship. Lordship is very important because Lordship is about surrendering your life to Him. When you say, you are my Lord and my Savior, you make Him as your King. Amen? Sometimes, on or most of us, we make Jesus Christ only our Savior of our life. We neglect Him to be the Lord of our life. When we are in this stage, He is our Lord. He is the King of my life. And the relationship? This is our relationship with Him. He become our husband. He become our husband. That's why the church is the bride, right? And He is the husband. If when He is our husband, then we give everything to Him. We don't dwell to, the, to Satan anymore. When He is our husband, then we are not flirting with sin. Satan is the sin. We don't want to flirt with sin anymore because Jesus Christ is our husband. We become faithful. We love him more. And you know the key of crossing over in this area? You know the key? I know I showed it here already. 
is about giving. This is the key to cross over into this area of maturity. We need to give. Okay? Giving is not only about finances, but of course it's part of it. But maybe you give your time, your love, your career, your house, everything that you own, you give it to the Lord. Surrender it to the Lord. You are my you are my husband. What I am right now is yours. What I have right now is yours. Right? You cannot say to your husband, okay, okay, everything is yours except this. Right? This is this room is my property. You are not allowed in this room. When Jesus Christ is our husband, everything that we have is his. Even our ambitions, even our careers, even our future is His. That's why we have to give to Him. This is very hard. Sometimes less Christians go to this area of maturity. It's hard to give. It's hard to give. But this is a must. God gave His Son to die for us. And when He gave, He wants us to give us more. Right? When someone died for you, you probably give everything for that person as well. And you know that Jesus Christ died for us. And we must give everything for Him as well. This is something, a win-win solution for each one of us. Sometimes we don't give because we think that we can do something else outside Jesus Christ. No, no, no one, there's no hope except Jesus Christ. The Bible said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is speaking. That's why it's very important to surrender our life to Him. Because He's the only one, He's the only hope that we have. And in giving, many get benefits. In this evening. Look at the brother and sisters beside you. When you give, that brother or sister will benefit on that giving. Amen? We cannot rent in this place when no one is giving. No one is growing maturely when no one is giving their time to disciple. No food in life group when your life group leader or core team is not giving for food. In the basement, all free. No one is, nothing is put downstairs where no one is giving as well. You know why? Because we get it, the principle from God. Because He gave first for us. Giving is something for us to grow. Because in giving, we are supporting His kingdom. In giving, we are helping other people. And if you want to be part of the kingdom of God, then give. Give your time. Give your strength. You know, don't give your time when you are already old. Many people have this attitude, okay, I will serve God when I'm retired already in my work. No. Give your time to God in your prime time. In your the, the strongest you. Give your time to God. You know, in the Old Testament, when they give the lamb to God, it is the best lamb ever to God. When you want to offer you to God, give the best of you. Amen? Don't serve God when you have already a human, right? Right? right there. No. Give the best of you right now. You're the best right now. You can serve right now. Amen, church? Give. Give the most of you. And even 2 Timothy, Paul is, you know, helping us to support one another and it says here and what you have heard from me in my presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others it's about discipleship it's about giving what i taught you teach to others as well to faithful men and to others as well that's why pastor is not the only one who teach everyone but all of us should teach one another what we learn from god must teach one another we visit one another. We care for one another. Amen, church? This is what we're going to do.
give and give so that we will mature even more. So that's why the sign of maturity in this level is that you deny yourself. Fellowship is your home and your family. You know, my children is always asking me, Daddy, do we have visitors in this house? Why do you always ask? Because they have fellowship as well. Probably they get bored of us. <laughs> I don't know. Probably they get bored. But they have fellowship. Even me. Where's the fellowship now? Where's the life group? Okay, not, not because I want to eat food in your life group, okay? But I really want to have fellowship with you. Only second factor of the food. But I love fellowship with you. When you are growing in, much, in this level, you love to be with your brothers and your sisters. Even, even you think they are so boring, it seems that you, you, you will see them, Jesus Christ, all the time. You feel joy when you see them. Their godly, godly advice is to always seek. Amen, I mean, church? Amen. And in this stage, you give more than your tithe. Okay, we give tithe. This is the 10%, okay? In this stage, you give everything more than your tithe. And the many people give their houses for missions. Give everything. They, they, they sacrifice their career for everything. Because they love Christ. Because they know that Jesus Christ is their husband. And in this stage, in this stage, you are not only learning from others, but also you are teaching new believers. Right? That's why infants get supported to be to support others. Before you were being taught. But now, in this stage, you are teaching others as well. Amen, church? Amen. It's like our, our children. My, my older son, my older son now is teaching, teaching Ivana. Smile. Right? I believe when, when, when my children grow older, he can teach something. I will, I will teach him to teach his siblings. When I am the fourth in the family, my, my, my older sister is always teaching me my assignments. Because this is what the mature does. They teach what they learn. They give what they learn. Okay? So these are the signs. And there's another thing. You consider every brethren that you have is a gift from God. Even they are annoying, they are still gift from God. You consider them partners of Christ. Right? Even sometimes, you know, they don't behave properly. You see them partners for Christ. You will understand they behave them, you know, and then you talk them. You don't just condemn them, but you teach them. You're going to say, hey sister, I know that you you have a hunger, atti a hunger attitude. It's an anger attitude. But you know what? God knows your heart and he can teach you. You're going to say, hey, you're a Christian. Why are you so angry this morning? Right? No. You are condemning. But when you are in this level of maturity, you love to teach them to be properly. Right? What else that you observe in this, at, in this maturity level? You want to give time. Invest everything. Invest friendship outside. You bring people outside to the family of God. This is the level of maturity. You evangelize, you share the word of God. Because you know what you experience is so good. What the love that you experience from God is so, you know, it's so amazing that you want to share other people as well. That's why you bring people here. And last but not the least, you look like Jesus Christ. You act like Jesus Christ. You do like Jesus Christ did. Amen, church? Amen. So where are you right now? It's only you who can answer. Where you are right now? If you are still an infant, we will not condemn you. It's part of Christian life. But we can help one another. Be open for teaching. Be open for teaching. When there is always teaching, just join the teaching. And you learn from it. Because we cannot, we cannot grow without turning, you know, without without turning to Christ. We cannot grow without other people. We cannot be a lone ranger to be alone as a Christian life. We must be together all the time so that we will grow. We cannot grow with, you know, 
We cannot just we cannot grow with just we just we are at home watching YouTube. We, you can you, you can watch preaching now in YouTube. There's a lot of preaching. Yes, you can you can watch preaching at the YouTube. But it's a different experience when you are with brothers and sisters. How many church? Do you experience that? Right? Because your gift cannot be practiced inside your home alone. Amen? If you have a gift of encouragement, how can you encourage someone there? You can encourage in the YouTube. Hey, go, Pastor, go! You cannot encourage in the YouTube. It's TV, right? It's, you can practice your gift in the church. Be present. I'm a church. Be present. We grow in giving and receiving the gift of God and from our brothers and sisters as well. Practice to receive gift from your brothers and sisters. Okay? Don't just give. Receive from your brothers and sisters. When they're offering help, receive it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. So, I know that sometimes, you know, we have the attitude that to receive gift from other people, from especially our brothers and sisters, because we think that we are self-sufficient. But then we are community of giving. You know, I cannot practice my giving when they cannot receive it. Right? When no one receives my gift. When I want to give something to Gemma and she, she doesn't receive it, how can I, how can I practice giving? When no one else to you wants to receive my gift, then I cannot practice giving. Amen? Because if you give, somebody must receive. Somebody must receive. And we must know that we must receive as well. When someone is blessing you by teaching or finances, receive it. Because the Bible said, when you sow, you reap. Because your brothers and sisters are sowing into your heart that they will receive later on in their life. Because this is the principle of it. I'm in church. And uh, can I ask the music team to come uh, in front? And I know that right now we have learned about this uh, table, about this uh, level of maturity. We are crossing over every areas of life. In 2018, I want you to have goals to really cross over to the next level of maturity. Can we all bow down our heads? Can we all bow down our heads? Let the Holy Spirit speak to you right now. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you right now. In 1 Corinthians 13, it says, When I was a child, okay, listen to me, church. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I become a man, I put childish ways behind me. This is the heart of Paul. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you right now. What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? I believe in my heart some of you are being challenged by the Holy Spirit right now. I believe in my heart some of you are being challenged right now. The Holy Spirit is challenging you to move forward, to cross over something in your life so that you will become mature. Promises. It's so nice to see the promises on that stage of our maturity, in that stage of our life. Last week, we were so encouraged to take the promises. We are so challenged to take that victory that we have in Christ. Now, we all detailed how to cross over that one. And it seems like for you, it's so tough to do it. But church, I want you to encourage right now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you think crossing over to the next level of maturity is hard for you, nothing is impossible with that. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Can I ask the leaders here, especially the life of leaders, to come in front here? I just want to pray for you. Who are the leaders here? Life of leaders. And the ministry leaders as well. Can I ask you to come forward? Continue to be in the silent of prayer. Be in the presence of God. Can you stand here? I just, I just I just want to pray for you. Just step, step the line here. I just want to minister to you. Just, just, just come in front. I 
here, these leaders, these leaders in life group, okay? Because I know that uh, you see them right now because they are pastoring each one of you. Okay, and the, and the pastor, of course, you know me as a pastor, but these are pastors, your pastors as well. When you say pastors, they are taking care of the flock. When you say when they are taking care of the flock, they are feeding the flock. They are caring the flock. If you just don't know what is happening in their life, sometimes they are so tired. Sometimes they are crying. Sometimes they just, you know, just want to give up. Because taking care of people is so hard. So hard. And I really understand that.
can you go forward as well and pray for your brothers and sisters?
make message. It, you know, sometimes in, in our lives, in our walk with the Lord, if we don't hear this kind of message, we don't really realize which level are we now. Where are we now? Are we still in France? Or are we just still in, in close to God and not crossing over? So church, as you've heard that message, have you realized now where you are? Which level were you? Do you still want to just be there in, in, in the infant's level? In being a baby Christian, I know, I know it's not easy to walk in that bridge, you know, in walk in that going up in that level where you you really realize that you are now in the giving area that you can give everything to the Lord. I know it's not easy, but we all know that this is. What God wants to be is waiting for us. So I hope, church, that you are so blessed in that message. Me, myself, as I was listening to Pastor Steve, I was also realizing myself where I am. And I hope that you also do the same. And I really felt the, the presence of the Holy Spirit that are here with us this afternoon. And so, I believe that you are all blessed. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, this time, God will bless, bless us through giving. And in Deuteronomy uh, 15, 10, I read for you. It says here, You shall, you shall surely give to him and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put to your hand. So as you give this afternoon, I want you to give from your heart. It doesn't matter how much is it, as long as you give from your heart. Because remember, God sees your heart. Can I ask the ushering team to please pass the basket? So I, I am so blessed with what Pastor Singh talked to us today about giving. You reap what you sow. If you give, you can get also, you will be blessed, right? So I hope that when we go home tonight, when we go home later, we can still reminisce the, the message today. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. Just continue to be the presence of God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the great message that you gave us this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, to God, how much you love us. And you promised us, to God, that in our journey, in this earth, Lord, in this life, O oh God, you promise us, Lord, that you will always be with us. Thank you so much, O God, even, Lord, for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, for giving us this great hope. Thank you so much, God, that in, in, in our walk with you, Lord, we have this great hope, O oh God, that only you can give. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us, especially, Lord, getting our health, and at this time, Lord God, that we give back to you, Lord God, what is belong to you. I pray, Lord, that you will just com continue, Lord God, to bless us, to give us, Lord God, what we need, Lord. And we, we thank you, Lord God, for being our great provider. I pray.
pray, Lord, that this offering that we have right now, you will also help us to guide to use this, Lord, in your ministry. Give us uh, to be a to be a um, to be a wise.
reason. So maybe we can move to the other day or the other month because no one uh, still that came to me to ask for water baptism. So, so that's why I, I didn't ask yet. So, but if uh, we, you are more than two or three, then I can ask, right? But since it's only one, I think, then uh, we can probably postpone it to, to the other days or the, the other month, okay? So, uh, I know that you are you want to have fellowship soon. Can we all stand and uh, let's have a prayer to end the service? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. Continue, Lord God, to be with us in our fellowship downstairs. Bring love, unity, and care for one another as we have this fellowship downstairs. Thank you so much once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all and see you downstairs.